Welcome back, my friends. Currently, we're on day 261 of Russia's disastrous invasion of Ukraine, and the Ukrainians did it. The Ukrainian military has officially liberated the city of Kherson. The Anatovsky Bridge has also been knocked down as part of Russia's retreats, and Kherson was the first major city to fall into Russian hands, and Russia has now surrendered it. So when we go on the war map on deepstatemap.live, we really need to jump back in time to November 7th because this is a day before the elections that we had here in the United States. Russia has wanted to give up on the north bank of this river probably for weeks, but politically they were holding off until Americans voted because they didn't want a morale victory for people in America who support Ukraine prior to voting on Tuesday. So the elections were on the 8th. It was then on November 9th, the day after that Russia announced their retreats. And then you can see the front lines, the bubble, it just starts collapsing. Here's the 10th, and then we get to the 11th, and then we get to the end of the day on the 11th. And at this point, I guess all of the Russian soldiers, Russian forces, have gotten across the river. How much equipment and material was left behind, uh, we don't know yet. I think we're going to get pictures and videos and reports of exactly what the Ukrainians are able to salvage from this region, as Russia completely has given up on it. The happiest day, joy in the city of Kherson as Ukrainian troops re-enter the city. And I do think it's important to remember how large of a city this was prior to the war. It was almost 300,000 civilians. And slowly, over the first couple months of occupation, this actually fell down, I believe, to close to 100,000. So how many civilians remain in the city? Uh, Russia tried to force deport as many as they could. But it looks like there's still maybe tens of thousands left in the city. So here are some of the videos of Ukrainian special forces entering the town and then being greeted by the civilians. <laughs> Let's show you uh, another clip here. This is the city center. This is the regional capital building. So Ukraine's forces have already risen a flag in front of the capital building in the center of the city. <laughs> So people are celebrating, they're greeting the soldiers as liberators. Here's one more clip of a uh, Ukrainian soldier, once again in front of that regional capital building, and he's holding a watermelon. <laughs> Lots of other incredible video surfacing on social media of Ukrainian civilians greeting their uh, defenders as heroes, liberating the city. And for weeks now, Russia has been evacuating, mass deporting, stealing as much as they could from this region, using these uh, tugboats, I guess, to drag a bar ship to get vehicles and equipment across the river. And we actually do have a video of Russian soldiers 
on one of these uh, barges crossing the river. I guess these two Russian soldiers only recently got to the city and listen to their reaction now that they've been ordered to abandon it. So he ends this video by saying, I also want to say, if there is a will to win, if there is a will to resist, then nothing is lost. The irony being completely lost on these Russian soldiers that the will to resist is from the Ukrainians. Kherson is a Ukrainian town, Russia has no business being there, and they are the ones who have lost because the Ukrainians persisted. And they also mention in this video there are posters and billboards everywhere saying Russia is here forever. That's what Russia has been telling the residents of Kherson for the last eight months. Here's a montage clip of them reinforcing this mantra. Я лично обещал, что Россия навсегда в Херсоне. Россия вам гарантирует. Этот мир поступит. Россия никуда не уйдет. Россия здесь навсегда. Вот вы правильно до людей доносить. Нет никаких причин, не может никаких причин быть для оставления Херсона. И вот не о чем тут даже разговаривать. Херсон не должен, не может быть сдан. Тот, кто сдаст Херсон, будет предателем просто. Просто предателем и изменением. Абсолютно с вами согласен, абсолютно согласен. Приступайте к отводу войск. Есть. Маневр войск будет осуществлен в ближайшие сроки. So by saying Russia is here forever, that was once again just another Russian lie as they have more than willingly surrendered the city to stop the hemorrhaging of troops and materials. Of all the pictures and videos of taking down these stupid propaganda posters, I like this one the most. Let me share about 15 seconds of this guy with you. Так, давай, дружины. Зроби красу. Ага, вони ще й на ветна. Це вони тризок заклеїли? Да, да. Ага, ясно. Да. So what's funny about this is there was a Ukrainian emblem on the wall, so they decided, some Russian soldier decided to cover it up with one of these posters. However, the first poster wasn't big enough to cover up the entire emblem. You could still see part of it down below, so some dumb Russian soldier went and got a larger poster to cover up the first poster. That, in a nutshell, sums up uh, how Russia governs. And here is a video of the Antonovsky Bridge. Russia did detonate it from underneath to bring down two large sections. They don't want the Ukrainians repairing it or using it to cross the river. Two bullets on the Antonovsky Bridge отвод российских войск на левый берег Днепра завершен успешно, как заявили Министерство обороны Российской Федерации. If there was an award for toughest bridge in the world, the Antonovsky Bridge would have to win it. This thing has been struck with dozens of HIMARS missiles, probably dozens of Excalibur round shells, uh, and then finally Russia had to plant explosives underneath it to bring it down. So this is what it looks like with uh, sections collapsed in the water. This war is going to have to be long over before the Ukrainians can repair it or just, I think, uh, construct a new bridge in a different location. And then this is going to have to be 
cleared. So what about the Novokokovka hydroelectric power plants? The Russians chose to detonate the remains of the Anatovsky Bridge, but the concern now becomes what is going to come of the hydroelectric power plant? To get vehicles and people across this dam, Russia actually filled in the canal lock with sand. So this is not something that Ukraine could uh, destroy. And as of right now, I think the Russians do control the dam and the Russians have rigged it to explode. So there might be an official agreement or an unspoken agreement that the Ukrainians will not contest this dam. They will not target the troops on the other side. The benefit to Russia, they still get to divert water to Crimea, but the benefit to Ukraine is the dam is not explo doesn't explode. So if Ukraine contests this dam, I think Russia will not hesitate to detonate it. Uh, so we'll see what comes of this. The other concern, the other thing that people are saying is that this is a trap and they're waiting for Ukrainian forces to go into the city and then Russian artillery on the other side of the river is going to start unloading on the town, just destroy everything. And as much as I think the Russians would love to do this, they would love to turn Kherson into Mariupol and destroy 95% of all buildings, they don't have the artillery or the ammunition to do so. Russia currently is begging the North Koreans for artillery rounds. So they don't have the artillery to destroy every building. They actually need to be smart and save some of their ammunition to fight the Ukrainian the Ukrainian military. But if Russia does magically stumble across a couple million rounds, they probably will start firing on the city. So I think uh, the Ukrainians won't hesitate to target them first. Uh, any Russian position within artillery range of Kherson, they're going to get high Mars uh, because they got to pull back in order to protect the city, protect the buildings and the infrastructure and the civilians. So big picture, what made the liberation of Kherson possible? And the number one thing was that attack on the Crimean bridge almost two months ago. So we get these sporadic updates on the timetable for fixing the bridge. Here's a recent photo and you can see that uh, one section has been completely brought down and they're only letting single lane traffic cross on the other section and no heavy trucks. As far as the rail line, one is completely out of action. The other one might be allowing small uh, freight trains through, but not heavy, heavy, long, uh, you know, uh, trait trains full of armored tanks and, and, and fuel trucks. So Russia was incapable of resupplying the city of Kherson through Crimea. This white line here you can see is the rail line going to this region. And because the bridge was taken out, Russia at that point knew that they couldn't hold this city. They couldn't properly resupply it. The only other rail line to get over here going east to west is this white line right here. And all of this is within artillery and HIMARS range of the Ukrainian forces. So it was not feasible once again to use this line to supply their forces over here by rail. How are they reacting on Russian state TV to the surrendering of the city of Kherson? And they're not too happy about it. И ни одного расстрелянного нет. Ни одного гаденыша за ухо не взяли. Ни один с собой не покончил. Ни один даже рапорт не написал. Соловьев doesn't look too happy. And here's a clip from a Russian newscaster that speaks the truth about what life in Russia is like currently. Because currently, it's against the law to say that you support withdrawing troops from the city of Kherson, and it's also against the law to say you oppose withdrawing troops from the city of Kherson. If you give your opinion at all at this point about what the Russian military is doing, 
you can be arrested and sent to prison. Стало известно о решении Министерства обороны нашего о том, что мы выводим войска с правого берега Днепра, то есть мы оставляем Херсон и занимаем оборону на левом берегу. Значит, если вы ждете, что я сейчас вам объясню свое отношение к этому, то я вам ничего не скажу. Но объясню почему. Если я поддерживаю это решение и говорю, что Министерство обороны поступает правильно, оставляя Херсон, то получается, что это публичные призывы к нарушению территориальной целостности Российской Федерации. В нашем Уголовном кодексе это статья 280, часть 1. Я специально сегодня утром проверял. Несколько лет лишения свободы. Если я не поддерживаю это решение, я считаю, что Министерство обороны поступило неправильно, оставляя Херсон, это публичные действия, направленные на дискредитацию вооруженных сил, та же самая 280 статья, только часть третья. Срок лишения свободы приблизительно такой же. So in Russia, if you support the withdrawal, you're, you're violating the integrity of the Russian Federation. But if you're critical of the military for withdrawing, that also can send you to jail. <laughs> In Russia, they just send you to jail for pretty much anything at this point. And Russia is losing this war. They know that. So they are desperate to go to the negotiating talks with Ukraine, uh, peace talks with anyone in NATO or the United States. Uh, here is a statement put out by the head of the press department at the Russian Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Мы по-прежнему открыты к переговорам. Мы никогда от них не отказывались. Мы готовы их вести, разумеется, с учетом тех реалий, которые складываются на текущий момент. So I'm confused. If the government in Kyiv are a bunch of Nazis who literally worship Satan, that is what they are saying on Russian state TV, that is the official position of the Russian government, why would you negotiate with Satan worshiping Nazis. <laughs> Russia is all of a sudden talking about negotiations because they're losing, and they're losing all of their leverage. So let's say that Russia pairs back their objectives in this war, and all they want is the Donbass region they already controlled prior to February, and the land bridge to connect Crimea. Well, they could have, four months ago, gone to the negotiating table and said, we will surrender to you the north bank of the Dnipro River. We'll also give you back the region of the Kharkiv Oblast that we don't really care about. If you acknowledge that we get this part of the Donbass region, plus the land bridge to Crimea. Ukraine was never going to agree to this, but this is something that Russia could have done four or five months ago when they had a position of strength. But now that they're losing, their ground forces are getting their asses kicked. There's no reason for, for Ukraine to go to the negotiating table. No reason to give Russia absolutely anything. At the pace that Russia is losing this war, Ukraine will take, retake Crimea by next summer. It's only going to get worse for Russia. The next security assistance package from the United States was announced worth $400 million dollars. Here's the tweet from Secretary of Defense Austin. Included in it is four Avenger air defense systems, Stinger and Hawk air defense missiles, HIMARS ammunition, another 100 armored vehicles, 500 of these precise Excalibur rounds, 400 grenade launchers, and mortar and howitzer ammunition. Russia's own domestic military production cannot keep pace with what Western countries are supplying to the Ukrainian military. And as far as manpower on the ground, it's who wants it more, Ukrainians defending their own people, defending their own cities, or forced, mobilized Russian conscripts that are poorly equipped, poorly trained, and more and more losing the support of their own people back home. All right, last couple clips I want to share with you guys. The first one is of a Ukrainian defender liberating the last occupied village in the Mykolaiv region. I think the biggest benefit to retaking the city of Kherson is the city of Mykolaiv will now be protected. Russia can no longer uh, 
launch artillery uh, into that city as they're pushed too far away. So here is what this Ukrainian defender has to say. Шановні українці, зараз знаходжусь в центрі міста Снегурівка. Воно звільнено нашими силами оборони. Наші хлопці зараз цей час проходять зачистка міста. Наші хлопці беруть його повністю під контроль. І це останнє місто, місто, яке утримувалось противником, яке відноситься до Миколаївської області. Тому ми можемо сказати, що Миколаївська область повністю звільнена. І зараз цей час наші сили оборони продовжують звільняти міста і селища Херсонської області. Тримаємось, разом переможемо. Слава Україні! So how is the morale of the Ukrainian people? How is the morale of Ukrainian defenders? And it looks pretty high to me. Uh, they, they seem to be uh, feeling pretty good, feeling pretty optimistic about the direction of this war. Final clip I want to share with you is a English address from President Zelensky. Uh, November 11th here in the United States is Veterans Day. In many European countries, this is also a Remembrance Day in that World War I ended on November 11th, 11-11. So here is President Zelensky in English uh, speaking to American veterans. I, happy, I happen to be one. Uh, and he just wants to show his appreciation and gratitude for those who chose to serve. On behalf of all Ukrainians, happy Veterans Day and thank you for your service. For almost 250 years, the men and women of the United States Armed Forces have prevailed against tyranny, often against great odds. Your example inspires Ukrainians today to fight back against Russian tyranny. Special thanks to the many American veterans who have volunteered to fight in Ukraine and to the American people for the amazing support you have given Ukraine. With your help, we have stunned the world and are pushing Russian forces back. Victory will be ours. God bless America and Slava Ukraini. That's all for this update video. Glory to the heroes, glory to Ukraine. If you found this video informative, give me a thumbs up. Best way to support my channel. Comments or questions, let me know down below. I love hearing from you guys. Till the next video, take care, be safe.